Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn to discuss further into integration by parts, and now look at an extra integration constants. Uh, basically, in my last video, I went over the proof of the air bound um, the air bound estimate formula for the trapezoidal rule approximation for definite integrals. And in the proof, I took advantage of the fact that every integral always results in an extra constant term called the integration constant and basically in this video I'll show how we can basically expand this whole concept for integration by parts as well so yeah, if you haven't seen the last video make sure to see it so you get a better idea of how I use that extra constant term basically for example let's look at uh, capital F of X let's let this be equal to the antiderivative of lowercase f of X or in other words the derivative d over dx of capital F of x is equal to small case f of x or an integral form you could write integral of f of x dx is equal to capital F of x and then always plus the constant right there so that is our integration constant let's just circle this and also by the fundamental theorem of calculus for well definite integrals this is an indefinite is uh, basically we, we also know that the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to antiderivative of f of x and then this is from a to b so this equals 2 f of b minus f of a yeah, and you could uh, see this also in my earlier video on definition of the integral in the, in the video link below. So now in this fundamental theorem, let's see what happens if we include that constant of, of integration in this above uh, antiderivative. So if we let go, let's say from, from a to b of f of x, dx equals two. Now instead of just plain old f of x, we add the constant c. Now it's going from a to b, so this equals two. Well, f of b plus c minus now, again, now we put this in bracket, f of a plus c. And again, what would put this bracket out, this will be a negative like that. And as you can see, the, the c's cancel out. And we're just left with, well, this equals 2 f of b minus f of a, which equals exactly this first part. Thus, for definite integrals, integration constant simply cancels out, and integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to f of x from a to b, and it also equals to f of x plus c from a to b. So it does not matter what this constant term is, the answer will always be the same. Yeah, so now let's see how this constant affects integration by parts. So integration by parts, recall, that's basically when you have an integral of the form f of x and then g prime f of x dx equals 2 f of x g of x and then minus integral from, this is g of x, f prime of x dx. And if you write it in the short short version way, the more concise, if you let, well, u equals 2 um, f of x. And now du, du is going to be the, well, the derivative f prime of x dx. That's this part. And that's this one there. And then also g, uh, yeah, you let uh, v or dv equals to g prime of x dx. And now the integral of this is going to be, well, v equals to g of x. In this case, uh, the usual integration of parts doesn't have the constant term. And again, you'll get u dv, so that's our dv, that's this part, equals to u times v minus v du. So that's integration by parts. Yeah, and you can learn more about integration by parts also in the video link below on, my, on the proof for integration by parts. So now in the usual formulation of integration by parts method, like I showed, the v function does not include the integration constant. So there's no constant there. Or it could also be viewed as c equals 0, or the constant equals to 0. So now if we include the integration constant, we get the right-hand side of the formula basically as 
Yeah, as instead our dv is going to equal to, well, this is again g prime of x dx, and now the integral of dv will equal to uh, g of x and then plus the constant c, or in other words, it's going to be equal to v plus constant c, and that's our constant. So the right hand side of the formula, what we get is uh, right here f. Yeah, f of x, and then over here, this is our g of x, but this time we add this constant c. So it will be g of x plus c, and then we have to subtract integral of now g of x plus c, and then we have our f prime of x dx, like that. And, and this also equals to the short term version u and then v plus c minus, and then this is v plus c a u, and then actually this is yeah, du, right here, du. So that's the short term version. And now we just need to prove that this is in fact equal to the original biparts uh, formulation. So we have to prove that this equals to this side right here. And now to do this, we need to look at the derivative of the integral. So, so if we look at the derivative, so d over dx of, let's look at this, uh, this full version, uh, one of it, and also multiply this inside. So we get f of x, g of x, plus f of x, and there's a constant uh, c. Right there, subtracted by, also multiply this inside. We have multiply this inside. This is going to be integral of g of x f prime of x and then plus constant c f prime of x and then bracket up like that dx. So now when we take this integral of all this, what we get is well this using chain rule. This is going to equal to f prime of x g of of x and then uh, this is going to be plus f of x and then g prime of x. That's using chain rule and you can see that also in the video link below how to do that. So now what we have here, now this is the derivative of this, this constant doesn't affect it in any way, it's going to be constant times now the derivative f prime of x. And now this part here, this is an integral, so the derivative of the integral is well the integrand itself or as you could see from over here, yeah, over here, the derivative of this antiderivative is just, well, this function inside. Because this f of x, uh, with or without the c, when you take the derivative, the c goes to zero, you get exactly this part right here. So, what we get, this is just the integrand or the function inside integral. This is going to be g of x, f prime of x, and then put the negative sign in, in front of it as well, just because there's a negative out here. Now we're going to have a c times f prime of x. So now that we have all this, let's see what happens. The c's right here cancel out. That's pretty interesting to note. And also there's this f prime of x, g of x, and this also this uh, f prime of x, g of x right there. So that cancels. All we're left with is this. So this equals 2 f of x, g prime of x. Yeah, and this right here, this is our integrand. So that is basically, that's basically the function inside of our integral, f prime of x, g prime of x, uh, dx, right here. So that's this part right here. So this means that it's exactly the same. Yeah, and so what we have is, since this is exactly the same, this constants, again, they cancel out. There's no constant there anymore. This means that now when we look at the shortened version of it, let's go integral from u, dv equals to uh, u times v minus integral v du. This equals to exactly the same as uh, with the constant. This equals to u and then v plus c minus uh, v plus c du. So this all equals the same, doesn't matter where what the constant is. And again, this basically means that whatever we make the value of the integration constant, yeah, the integration by parts method still holds true.
Yeah, and thus, uh, when we look at a, an example, basically the following integrals right here are, bo are both one and the same. So this one integral x cos x dx using integration by parts, we get x sin x minus integral of sin x dx, or if we just put in a random constant seven, these are still the same. For And, and here, let me show you how I got here. Let u equals to, in this case, we let it equal to x. So du is equal to dx, and then dv is equal to cos x dx, that's this part, and then the integral of dv, this equals 2 cos, I mean, this is going to be sine x, sine x plus a constant c, which equals 2, well, we'll just write v plus c, so v equals sine x, and whether we include this constant or not, this is going to be the exact same thing. And now basically since the indefinite integral can include the integration constant or not, it's still going to be the same answer. The same holds for, uh, it holds true for definite integrals and we could easily show that is true for this above integral. So if we were taking this from, let's say, integral from 0 to pi over 2 of x cos x dx, now this equals 2. Yeah, this equals 2. Let's write about this above one here. Let's, let's solve the first one without the constant. 0 to pi over 2 minus integral of this one is sine x dx from 0 to pi over 2. And now we'll recall it when you plug these in. Recall just to make it easier that the integral, I mean, sine of pi over 2, this equals to 1. You can see more in my trigonometry videos, cy, and also sine of 0 equals to 0. And then for cos, it's the opposite. Cos of 0 equals to uh, 1. And sine of pi, I mean, cos of pi over 2 equals to uh, 0. So it, it just flips around. Yeah, so we have pi over 2 is 1, then for sine, so as you can see, they just switch cos and sine uh, from 0 to 1. So when you plug that in, this equals 2, plug this in, so pi over 2 times by sine of pi over 2, which is just 1, then subtracted by, well, plug in the 0, that's just 0. And now we have this one right here. This is going to be integral of sine is going to be cos x or negative cos x, because the derivative of this is negative sine and negatives cancel from 0 to yeah, 0 to uh, pi over 2. This equals 2 now. Solving this, this is just pi over 2 minus, now when you plug in this, this is going to be negative, um, yeah, this is going to be negative 0. And then we have to subtract the negative, plug in the 0, we get this 1. So 1. So this becomes a plus 1 and then becomes a minus right here because this extra minus. So what we get is pi over 2 minus 1. And now let's try applying the same thing but for the constant. So if we had instead x cos, uh, actually this is going to be yes, sine of x plus the number 7. This is just a random constant we just picked from 0 to pi over 2. And then we have integral from, this is going to be sine x plus 7 dx, 0 to pi over 2. So this equals 2. This is going to be, put this inside, pi over 2. And I'll put this right here. Uh, this is x sine of x, x cos x dx equals 2. This is from 0 to pi over 2. So these are equal, and you'll see it right here. So when you plug in this pi over 2 inside, this is pi over 2 bracket, this is going to be sine of pi over 2, which is equal to 1 plus 7, and then we have to subtract, when we plug in 0, that's a 0. Uh, this cancels out everything, we don't need to know what's inside. And now when we plug this in, oh, the integral of this, this is going to be, put this like this, integral of sine of x, that's going to be negative cos of x, and then plus 7 x right here. And again, this is from 0 to pi over 2. This equals 2 now. This is, well, 8 pi over 2. Let's add these up. Subtracted by, 
And now when we add this pi over 2 inside, that's 0. So we have a negative 0 uh, plus 7 pi over 2. And then subtracted by, now subtract this by. Now inside here, we plug in the 0. That's going to be negative 1. But then the 7 goes to 0. So plus 0. So now what we have is a pi over 2. Subtract this by 7 pi over 2. Take Put this inside. And put this inside, we get a plus, then there's a negative 1. So we have a negative 1 like that. And then there's 7 pi over 2 uh, subtracted from 8 pi over 2. That's just going to be pi over 2 minus 1. So as you can see, the, it just cancels out the constants, or the 7 in this case. And this is the exactly the same thing. So that's all I wanted to just make sure you understand. doesn't matter if we add a constant or not it's still going to be the same thing. So basically the integral of any function has infinite number of solutions. And that's very uh, useful for proving a lot of formulas, especially this error bound estimate in my last video, which I used the fact that the constant could be anything. So make sure to watch that. Anyway, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned, and like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.